ready to start week 17 of a teaching series entitled Your True Identity, Who I Am in Christ, Jesus Christ. And before we do that, we, we never want to approach the Word of God or, or any teaching or preaching without opening in prayer, and we're going to do that right now. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather and to learn about who you are, Lord. That's why we are here. We're pressing towards the mark to apprehend all the fullness of what we were apprehended to apprehend, Lord. So we gather each week uh, through six services here in your honor, Lord, to praise and worship you uh, because our hearts are pointed towards you, Lord, and we're focused on learning about who you are so that we can apprehend what you wanted us to be. So, Lord, we ask you to bless the words that come forth from my mouth. Let them be your words, Lord. Let it be the words of God. Uh, Let all the honor and glory this evening go to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, I'm going to give you a brief introduction. Um, I know the people here are... Uh, the people that come here in person are mature believers in the faith and they're hungry after God's heart right now, which is what we're actually commanded to do in the Bible. Uh, but week after week, there's more and more new people tuning in. And, and I don't know if you're, uh, I, I don't know where you are in your walk or even if you have begun a walk in Christ. So, we're going to take a couple minutes to just talk about that, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to read something because even though it was my hand that wrote it this morning, when God wakes me up in the middle of the night uh, and I get downloads from Him, as I'm typing, I look at it, and the words are not in my head. I'm just I'm just a vessel at that point. And I'm, so I'm going to read because I don't remember all the, what it says. Uh, but it was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And it's a message for the body of Christ that I put on Facebook. It's been on several groups. But for those tuning in, uh, this came out of my heart. And I believe it's the words of God towards the, to the church. That's what it's written to, the body of Christ, God's people. And then we're going to talk about what's happening here at Jesus is Lord. Uh, beyond that, I have a message prepared. I had one prepared last week, but uh, Holy Spirit, take over. And at this point, I'm just going to let him do it because I'm, I'm really not sure whether he wants me to teach you, to preach at you, or to, uh, to just talk to everybody. So we're just probably going to get a combination of all those things. But as far as the the class, the the teaching that we're in, uh, once again, this came by inspiration where I had recommitted myself to God to press in to what and who he is. Uh, And I wanted to get to know him. And and day after day of, of praying that, God said, it's time for you to get back up and teach now. And I want you to teach who I am. So the answer to my prayer of God, I got to know you better, came, his response was, all right, then you're going to get up and teach people who I am. And my initial inclination was, how am I going to do that when that was what I asked you? And he said, you'll figure it out as you go. Well, one of the things that we're going to see today is the closer that you get to God, the closer he's going to get to you. Draw near to to me and I'll draw near to you. And we're going to see an example of that, not because of what I'm going to show you. Uh, It's a prop, but it is not to, 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 it's not to brag about me. It's just to put the try to get people to understand the inspiration that God's putting into his people, uh, I believe, outside of this church, but at least in our small community of believers here. Uh, He's lit a fire in us, but we've prayed that, 
day in and day out, week in and week out over for more than a year now to give us a divine hunger and thirst for righteousness for you, Lord. Uh, and this class was birthed out of that, that crying out to him is, is one of the things. The foundational scripture is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, where God said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So the triune Godhead is present. God just got done with his six days where he created everything. And now he, he's going to create man, which is male and female, and his intention, he says, let us make them in our image. So our, our identity is in Christ, but we have to get to know who he is. We have to become after his likeness. Um, that was the inspiration for the class. And the more that I had to study God who he is, and, and then spend the time with him, the closer he brought me to him because I was drawing near to, to him. And, and, and I want to show you that. So when I show you some of this stuff up here, please look beyond this. This is not about me. I just want to show you what you have at your fingertips when you don't think you have the time because there's no excuses. It's commandment of God and we have modern technology today at our fingertips to get through this. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a little while. We ask God to quicken us into his likeness, but we still have to act and move. And one of the ways that that quickening is happening in me is the more that I have modern technology at my fingertips, the more volume of information I can obtain right in front of my eyes on who God is. And then he quickens that to me at a pace that, that, that it, it, it's, it's, I can't describe it. You just have to do it because I don't have the words to do that. It's just a, a phenomenal experience. It's, it's a divine download based on him pulling me closer. And the closer I pull to him, the more that he just, and envelopes me and you, you have to do it to experience it I, I don't have the words to tell you so one of the things that happens is I, I get waking up at different times uh, but I've learned over the years when that happens there's times where God wants me to go back to sleep and he'll tell me I want you to rest now and there's other times where he says, get up. And I know I get up no matter what time it is. This morning it was 2.30 in the morning. Uh, I knew that. I went into the prayer room and I started to pray. And then all of a sudden a download hit me. I mean, it hit me hard in my heart. And I knew it was from God because I heard him tell me months ago. He said, one day... One day I'm going to use your mouth to speak to the body of Christ. And it'll be my words because you'll do it no matter what. Because you said yes to me even though you knew that you'd be persecuted and spit on. And that's why I'm going to use you to do that. So I wake up and this hits me. And I know to just, I, I grab my phone and I start typing and the words are not in my head. They're just, I'm watching what's coming out. And, and again, if you've not experienced this, it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing thing to the point where, you know, there's times where I'm watching what's coming out on the screen and I'll actually say, wow, that was good, God, because <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> and I'm looking at it, but not thinking about it. So I don't want to forget what this was, because this was something that's been on my heart for a long time. 
but in my natural carnal mind and with maybe motives that are not godlike uh, whether that could have been a lashing out at somebody that attacked me or, or whatever, uh, the words were not there. And I can tell you, the more that I press into God right now, I physically could feel his hands on my heart this week as he's massaging me and taking me to where he said he was going to take me to. Uh, it's not been easy. And he told me he was going to answer a prayer over a year ago he said, you keep crying out to me to bring you on the mountain like I did with Moses, and I'm going to do that, but you're going to get your knees scuffed up, and you're going to go through some, some bumps in the road uh, before you get there. And whenever, whenever he tells me what he's going to do, I always have to respond, yes. He gives me the option, and he says to me, are you willing to do that? sight unseen, whatever that looks like. And if I say yes, it activates him and he starts to move. This is just my explanation of how he works in me. Um, so I'm going to read this to you because I can't think of a way to say this to a group of people without offending them. And people probably will get offended, maybe some of them. But this is, this was not me. And it's, it, there's a diplomacy here and, and a love within this, even though it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's somewhat of a harsh uh, message, or it would be if I had to, to, to think this myself. So this was titled, Early Morning Post to the Body of Christ. And this is what, this is what I typed, and this got posted in Facebook this morning. There are brothers and sisters in Christ who are running away from God. They feel shame because conviction fell upon them. And because of that conviction, you left the sheepfold and are wavering and wandering out there on your own, perhaps in shame of what God has revealed to you. The conviction that you are experiencing is the judgment of God that came upon you through the revelation that you were not who you thought you were, or even practicing what you thought was from God. But God is the only righteous judge, and he was coming to judge his church first. And as the only righteous judge, he has, through his mercy, offered his people to come to a place of repentance through a contrite heart and a humble spirit. Let him restore your heart and renew your spirit. Let him heal you. It is by the renewing of the mind through the washing of the water of the word of God that was the answer and not the ways of the world that you thought. It was by the deception and through the lies of the enemy that one's imagination can run wild as false doctrines that are first embraced and then followed and perhaps maybe even been taught to others, has overcome the truth that you first fell in love with. For the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy God's people, but Jesus is the good shepherd, and he is the door and the gatekeeper. The church was going to be convicted first by our righteous judge, and those who have come to a place of a repentant heart have turned away from the false doctrines that were adhered to, need to turn about and come back into the sheepfold. Do not let pride keep you wandering out of the sheepfold as easy prey to the wiles of the devil. Repent, and forgiveness from our Lord and Savior is available to all through God's mercy, grace, and his love. So come back into the sheepfold and gather with God's people once more. We have all had to recommit our hearts to follow Jesus because if any man, male or female, says he has no sin, they are a liar. It was inevitable that God would judge his church first because he will not stand for a harlot church. He wants clean, committed hearts that are willing to pursue the light and run towards his holiness. So come out of the darkness of the false doctrines that deceived you Repent, 
turn away from them and run towards the light and the truth once more in the safety of the sheepfold. You know who you are because the Lord thy God examined his children's hearts and brought a spirit of conviction upon his church. It is your flesh that needs to crucify the pride that lingers and holds you back. Come back into the sheepfold and gather once more with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We do not judge you. You have already faced the judgment put upon you through the conviction in your heart. Come back, come back, come back. In Christ's love, your brother in Christ. That is what God wants his people to do. There is forgiveness for sins, but we have to repent and turn away from ourselves. We have to turn back to God. There's a lot of false doctrines out there, and the, 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 tonight's message is, is not to, to speak on those. That will come at a later time. Uh, and, and, and I'm certainly not going to name any names, but uh, this message had to go out, and it, and it went out today. Uh, it's, it's gone out on the Internet, and uh, like I said, that, that's been weighing heavy on my heart for well over a year now. Um, but God, in <laughs> as usual had to remind me way back then and continues each day you still got a beam in your eye so you, you worry about working with me one-on-one -on -one and let's get that beam out and then you can help others uh, and that's that's true of all of us so that was how my day started and before we get into what I think we're gonna get into I want to talk a little bit about our Sunday uh, here at Jesus is Lord Ministries International. We have gathered every Monday for, it's got to be well over a year now, uh, there's a small group of us to, um, to gather to cry out to God for, uh, for him to pour his spirit out. And it's not for him to pour it out just at Jesus is Lord Ministries International. It's, it's for him to pour it out amongst all flesh, like the Bible says, all mankind. And you don't have to have a lot of people. If you study revivals, there's not a lot. What there is are, are some people, and, and I'm not bragging on the people here, I'm just saying God's answered prayers individually within us uh, to change us after his likeness. And when you do that, and, and, and I believe the cry of our hearts, and I, I, I believe I, I, what I'm going to say is, is how each of us might individually feel. But right now, I feel like I've been shot out of a cannon and I'm headed right for a bullseye, and the bullseye is God's heart, and it's a furnace, and that's what my motive is, is to walk into that fire so I can come back out for what he wants me to be, and there's nothing left of me but his spirit that's inside of me. Uh, that's, that's the cry of my heart, because I can't be holy, I can't be righteous, there's nothing in me other than a sin nature that I have to deal with every day. And I can only do that by apprehending what's available to me. And that first commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. I cannot do that within my carnal mind or my, my, my fleshly body on my own. I have to be divinely inspired and, and moved by the Spirit of God towards that bullseye, uh, which is that furnace to step in, just like uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, they were persecuted, but there's a type and shadow there. So are we. We have to, get, we have to be killed. We have to die and lay the old man down 
and and let them burn up and come out of that furnace knowing that that fourth angel the angel that was in there with them is going to be with us when we walk into the fire because he's the one calling us into it he wants to purge us and purify us of ourselves so as we cry out for that week after week the presence of god has built up and at some point very soon there's going to be a crescendo that hits here uh, based on a, a, a few people's hearts pressing in to, to, to seek that face-to-face -face encounter with God. And I'm going to recap what happened Sunday because I can't remember what I posted the other day. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. I think it must have been the day after. It must have been Monday morning. Uh, but I got inspired to just put a post out of what happened here. Uh, and I wasn't bragging on this church. The intention was, this is what's happening when people start to look away from themselves and towards God. Jesus said, follow me. And that's what we're trying to do. And the outcome will be a mighty awakening but there is a price to pay, and the price to pay was the people that are here, the few hungry people that do come here that haven't, that, that don't run away after they come and, and face conviction from God. God is judging his church first, and there's going to be repentance that has to come within the church leadership first. Uh, and that's happening. It's happening, I can only speak for me, it's happening within myself. Uh, and again, the closer I draw to God, the more he shows me what he's purging out of me. Um, sometimes I have to work harder at it. Uh, other times he just rips something out, but he shows me what it is uh, that he's taken out of me. And um, it's not... God's attributes, his character, or his personality, or his nature that he's ripping out of me. That's what he's trying to put in me. It's me fighting back and pushing against that in, in a carnal body. Um, that's where the good fight is. So we show up Sunday morning, and we began to sing a song that C.C. Winans had put out uh, called Waymaker. And the Spirit of God hit the congregation like a blanket. And the more that we sang, the more people responded to it, initially back in our seats. And that's one of the things that I'm going to talk about tonight, because God asked me a question uh, this evening, uh, or, or I'm sorry, he asked me a question this week, uh, and, and I'm going to put that out to the body of Christ in general, because it's not just for here. But um, we sang this song, and the song, the, the song uh, goes along the lines that you are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you, I worship you, and it repeats those two stanzas uh, until it gets to um, you are way maker, and it goes through and lists uh, God's attributes. Miracle worker, um, promise giver, light in the darkness, my God, that's who you are. And as we sang, God showed up. And I'm going to give you the definition of what praise and worship is shortly, but I want to talk about this first because if I start with the definitions and I start to give you, uh, for lack of a better term, that technical data or technical information, you're going to miss it because that's what led to this, but you got, it's got to happen backwards. I don't know why. It's just what I feel in my heart. So... Our worship leader, Kathy Yeager, began to play the song again. And the more that song 
went through the congregation and the more we sang, the stronger God's presence got. By the time Pastor Mike got up to preach a powerful message, um, it was God was that God was responding and doing exactly what that song said. I could feel him in our midst and he was working in this place before the message was done. Um, the message was done under the spirit of God. Uh, if you if you've never seen that before in person, you need to come to this church, and you'll experience it because you'll see somebody behind the pulpit that is transformed into something else other than what they are in their natural body, and you can see that happen up there. Or at least I can see that in the spirit. Um, so God responded to those words, and miracles happened that day. When we were done, that song was replayed again by the Spirit of God. And, and going back, this is how people get led by this. This is how God operates and why we have to gather. I'm going to give you an example. My wife heard this song. She plays it every morning this CD, she made me a copy of it, and for 10 days, I listened to the CD, and I could not get off that song. I sang that song for an hour and a half into work, and an hour and a half back out. So literally for three days, that song became a meditation to me. And every time I sang it, I wept and I wailed in the presence of God. So, as I explain what's happening to my wife, she makes a copy of this and says, can you please bring this in and give it to, to Kathy Yeager? That's, that's our worship leader. So I do. I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, Pastor Mike, when he preached, didn't even know that, that they were going to do that song. So Kathy listens to the song, and it becomes the theme song for our worship before the service starts the message which is tied into the song so everything is being linked together over two weeks time and then it comes to this culminating effect that happened and is still happening now and and what that was was God answering the cries of his people and he heard our hearts. It came out of our hearts. And the Holy Spirit moved. It moved. I can't dance. And I danced. The Spirit of God hit me. And, and, and I wasn't forced to. I wanted to. Uh, because the Bible says to dance. It says to lift hands. And we're going to talk about that too this evening. Um, but after the service, typically... The Spirit of God moves in such a way here that I have to go take a nap, and I didn't because I was on a, 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 an overdrive of emotion um, that, that it, 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 even though your body's tired, you, you can't sleep. And it carried into our Sunday 5 p.m. Uh, pre-service prayer where we... we uh, we we set the stage for the service to have the Holy Spirit show up and then come into the sanctuary. Uh, we had a guest speaker who's really, I call him a guest speaker, he's really not. He's, he's an apostolic leader in the community, uh, Pastor Gary Schaefer, and he came up. And again, uh, which is not uncommon, his message was the same scriptures that Pastor Mike preached in the morning. So again, there's one more piece of God's body because they're gathering and working together that are, are, are working as a whole unit, individually doing what God's inspiring them to do. And in so doing, the ingredients are coming together to allow God to do in his body, not just one person, what he wants to do, what he wants all of us to experience. 
and the, the presence of God was still thick. So here's a person who wasn't here in the morning, similarly happened in Thurmont, Maryland, where he preached, but he comes in and he feels that. And under the Spirit starts to preach, and then the Holy Spirit just comes in and takes over. And, he, and that was the end of the message, because the, 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 whole, the whole point of what happened was God was answering people's hearts. And people responded, people got healed. There's a, there was a woman in the service that, uh, and I believe that there's somebody that's, that's uh, recording our services other than us at, 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 in our website that I think she does uh, afterwards too. Uh, and I, I've got, we have got to find out and let you know where that is so that you can see what happened. But this woman was bent in half in a wheelchair with her head down in a position that is almost impossible for a human body to be in. Just a, a crippling, painful uh, position. And when she heard that song, because Pastor Gary turned around and asked them to play that, she got up out of the wheelchair and walked up to the altar uh, and got touched by God. And her healing, I believe, is still going on now. Um, people that needed the laugh got hit with joy. Um, my stomach muscles are still tight from not just laughing uh, as I did, but, but the, the depth of work came up out of me. Uh, it, it's, it's part of the, the, the rivers of living water that are supposed to come up out of our belly. And there is a scripture verse somewhere where it says that that comes up out of your heart. That's where it has to start. But it was an amazing day and, and it, it's, there's an overflow that happens from that when we leave as a gathering, as a complete body, and go out amongst our own lives and carry that out with us on how that touches the rest of the world. And you, you have to, I cannot emphasize this enough, you have to, the body of Christ has to get off asking God I, I'm, help me out here, Holy Spirit. We're quick to ask God for what we want, and then we don't go out and look at how he's answering those prayers in, in ways that he can only do that. But if you can focus on him and leave that kind of a service, you're going to see favor in your life and how he's opening doorways up. And, and you have to see that and take your eyes off yourself to be able to be, have a thankful heart to continue and build on that. Um, so we have to get over ourselves and what we want. Because we're, we're going to be, I want, it's me, 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 I want, I want. And, and please don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to tell you that if you need healing. Uh, but take the time to get into the Bible and look at those 7,000 promises that are, that are, he's a promise maker, like the song said. But you've got to be able to, you got to have faith. Your faith has to outweigh any unbelief in you for what you're looking at. And you've got to do some things that God tells you to do to be able to apprehend that. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible where a, a, a father brings a demon-possessed child and he tells Jesus that the disciples, two of them, couldn't cast the demon out. And Jesus responds, oh, you have little faith. And he turns around and does it, uh, you know, in, in a way that, that with his little pinky, because there is no demon in hell uh, that can overtake or should overtake the church. That was a key given to us in Matthew 16. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Jesus' response to the disciples when they ask him why they couldn't do that is he said this kind 
requires prayer and fasting. Well, what did that mean? That they had to pray more for God to do that? No, they saw something that their unbelief outweighed any any uh, act of faith that they had. They acted on faith to do it, and then I believe what they were looking at looked greater than what they thought they could do. So their circumstance looked bigger than, than what they their faith was. And you've got to build your faith precept upon precept. You have to walk by faith, and, and the message isn't based on faith, but, but it's, it's, it's a desire to pursue holiness that has been a theme here for a while, uh, which is what God wants his body to be. And that is for now in this earth, not just later when you when you walk, you know, if you make it and, and you stay on that narrow and long path and you don't go the way of the, the wide, the wide one to destruction. So that's what's happening here. Uh, that that kind of experience should inspire people when they leave to even press further and 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 have their faith increase because Jesus even said without signs and wonders and miracles they won't believe uh, those things come here because of the word of God when the gospel the full gospel the full word of God is taught and preached because the Bible says preach the word signs wonders and miracles follow because God's word does not return void uh, God cannot lie, but those things have to come first, and, and your motives have to be pure. So I, my expectation is uh, every morning when I get up, I'm going to be overwhelmed in the presence of God, and then he's going to send me forth in my day. Um, and and that, that can only, the, the fact that, that that I meditated on Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord thy God with all thy heart and he will direct thy steps. That can only come by faith. You have to walk by faith and not by sight and, it, and it's not going to happen overnight. It can with, with certain things, but there's a, there's a refining process that we have to go through because our carnal nature is going to resist God. So let me just look at now that now that you and I encourage you to to go and and look on YouTube, look up that song Waymaker and listen to it. Um, it's a it's a powerful song, but I want to I want to tell you what what brought that spirit in, <clears throat> and I'm going to give you the definitions of praise and worship. The word praise in in the Dutch language, and I'm not a linguistics uh, professor or anything, but again, with modern technology, you have the ability to gather information quickly, have it in front of you, and and you you're looking at it. And when when I do that, and I have this all out, it it has an impact greater than than if it was piecemeal so in dutch it means to praise and it also means to estimate or to value in the german language it means to praise and i'm not going to give you the, the the words they all look very similar in danish it means to praise to extol or to lift up. There's worship songs. Lord, we lift you up. I I exalt thee. That's what that's doing. I'm lifting up Jesus. In and this is interesting. In Swedish, Welsh, Armoric, and French, it all means to prize, to value, place a high value on, or a price, a lofty price on. In Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. 
It means to estimate, to boast, or to glorify. So it appears when you're looking at these, and this is only 10 languages, excluding the English language, uh, that this word comes praise, price, and prize. Those three words all come out of the root, a root word. So they all mean the same thing. They maybe have different meanings and branch out, but they, they a praise is, is linked to price or a prize. And, and uh, th there should, w your mind should start to piece this together. Why would we praise our Lord and Savior? Well, the answer is right there in that one title, because he is Lord and Savior. He's the one that saved you, if you're saved, from yourself. So, these three roots are linked to verbs, which are action words. They're not nouns, they're not titles. They're to commend, to applaud, to express approbation of personal worth or actions. Personal. They should be directed towards the person of Jesus Christ. That's who we're supposed to praise. We praise Christ. We praise God the Father. To extol in words or song, to magnify, to glorify on account of perfection. It's another word for holiness. That's been the theme for over a month now of excellent works. And that's exactly what Christ expects of us. Be you doers of the word, not just hearers either. We're supposed to be verbs in, in the word of God. We, we read it and then we go act on it. Those are the definitions of praise. So if we're looking at songs that we're singing or even listening to on the radio, my question to the body of Christ is, who are they speaking about? Is it, is it even, even worship, what, what's defined as some Christian music today, appears to be a crossover from other, uh, other areas of music uh, and I'm going to try not to be critical here, but I didn't like country western music when I was a kid. My dad loved it. I just didn't like listening to somebody whine about how their wife left them. They ran out of beer. The dog died. Uh, their pickup truck broke up and they got fired. I'm sorry, but there's more to life than that. Uh, and some of these songs are talking, that's what they're talking about, their life. And there's less of what God did in it. They're not even really testimonies to, 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 to God. Um, so I challenge you to, to, to go look up the definition of praise, write it down and keep it with you. And when you read whatever it is you're reading or spending time doing whatever you do throughout your day, look at the definition of this and see, am I doing what this word praise means to, to the lofty one, to the holy one, the one that, that is perfect? The word worship means excellence of character, dignity, worth, or worthiness. Not long ago, I think it was two weeks ago, Pastor Mike kept hearing the word wow, and God said, worthy of worship. Well, here it is. That's the definition of worship. <laughs> wow. Chiefly and eminently the act of paying divine honors to the supreme being God. Pay 
God divine honors. Now, if you've got the spirit of Jesus Christ in you, there's a divinity in you that's not of you, but you ought to be, <laughs> you ought to be releasing that spirit should be coming out of us and, and praising and worshiping God. That's the noun of, of that word. The verb is to perform acts of adoration, to adore, pay divine honors to, pay reverence with supreme respect and veneration. Now, why would we do that? Well, I'll give you a scripture because I, I, I haven't given you that today and usually I bombard you with scriptures because I feel like I know by faith the word of God will not return void. So if one scripture goes out when I'm speaking and hits one person, then, then I, I've accomplished what I, then I heard rightly from God when I got ready to stand up here. For thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, with a capital J, is a jealous God. That's Exodus 34, 14. We serve a jealous God. He's holy. He's perfect. We should be praising. Every breath we take should be directed towards him in, with a thankful heart because he created us to be like him but we're not to honor with extravagant love extreme submission as a lover wow for thou shalt worship no other god for the lord whose name is jealous is a jealous god that kind of makes sense when we go back when the the lawyer tried to trip jesus up and say uh, well, that's really good, but, but what, what, is the, what is the great commandment? What is the first commandment? And he said, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, to love your neighbor or all others as yourself. The great commandment is tied in to the holiness of God. You have to do that to, to worship God, who he is. So as, as you, as we, as a small group of people here, press in to praise and worship God and give him the glory, and then we sing, when I read those words to you, they don't, they're not speaking of any kind of lackadaisical ho-hum response out of somebody that just got saved and, and is now has the opportunity to enter into the kingdom of heaven rather than burn in the fire pit of hell. So, and, I, and, and where we're going with this is the question that God asked me today, and I believe it was a challenge. This is what he asked me. And I, I heard this like it was his audible voice. He said to me, Why do my people so eagerly come to the altar to ask things of me, and yet they so sheepishly lay back in their seats to praise or worship me? Why can't they lift their hands? Why can't they sing? Why can't they jump? Why can't they dance like David? And yet they can run up to my altar to meet me and ask me for stuff. And I was thinking about it to respond. And, and then, uh, uh, you know, God sometimes has a sense of humor. He said, don't answer that, Peter. That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> I can't answer that without bringing judgment down on people because I'd have to think of, of uh, I could only answer that in myself. So he let me off the hook by not answering the question. But he put something on my heart this past Sunday 
And that was to challenge the congregation to come forward. I forgot to do that, but the Spirit of God didn't. And, and everything that happened Sunday uh, led that to happen anyway. Uh, we can't forget that. I believe every Sunday when we sing to God, we should become the verbs that those definitions tell us to become and not the nouns sitting back in our chair. And we should come up forward as one united body and, and just let loose to God like we did this Sunday. I believe that's what he's waiting for us to do. There's been times here where I've looked at the words on the screen and I get so deep in my heart uh, a love of God that, that, that comes up out of me that I don't really care who's there. It just draws me up to the altar and I, I don't, I'll get down on my knees or put my hands up and, and I don't do that to draw attention to me. And if people are looking at me, they're missing the whole point of this message or the whole point of this book. <laughs> it isn't about me. There's another song called King of Glory that you should Google and listen to the words. I have a copy of it here if anybody wants it. Because this song is exactly the words of what the definition of praise and worship are. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king, so let us start right now. Why would we wait? I believe whoever wrote this song, I think it was C.C. C. Winans, I believe that was the rhetorical question that God put on her heart, just like he asked me the question that he did. And she wrote the rest of the song. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. And it repeats itself. And then it mentions God's attributes by his titles. King of glory. King of healing. King of my peace. King of my joy. King of power. And I will dance in your presence. And it repeats itself seven times. I will sing hallelujah. That repeats itself seven times. I think that's prophetic because the words, the number seven in Hebrew means completion. For some reason, these two accolades to, to God bring completion. And I believe when we can do that and let go enough to do that, we're... God has to respond because we've reached up and actually opened up heaven to where it just comes down on us like it did here on Sunday. So king of glory, fill this place. There's no personal agenda in these words other than heartfelt cry to God to fill the place with his presence. That's all that this song is doing. And I, I say all not to diminish the song. That's all that it should be. So God expects movement out of his people. And he expects us to make an effort. We have to become verbs. I didn't write that down. That's just coming out of me when I'm looking at what the definitions of the words are. I didn't do well in the English language in school. So... I would encourage you to read Psalm 1. We talked about that two weeks ago because it tells us who the blessed person is. But in the back three verses, it tells you what happens to the other people 
that don't do what God's asking to do in that scripture. And I mentioned this last week. Uh, I'm not I'm not condemning people. I'm just saying that it's pretty apparent because we've been studying what righteousness is and what holiness is that there's two people. There's two people groups and it has nothing to do with your race or your color, but it has all to do with your belief system and your heart. And it's the righteous and the ungodly. And that, that's the words that God uses. They're not Peter Yanata's words. Read Joshua 1, verse 8 and 9. Read Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Read Psalm 4, verses 20 and 22. And read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when you get done, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again. And when you get through it, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again. And get so deep in who Jesus is that you cannot help but want to be like him and get the revelation that I got to be like that. Because that's what God said his intention was when the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit had a conversation in Genesis chapter 1. God spoke the Word, and the Holy Spirit hovered over the abyss, and creation happened, and God said it was good. And then when you get done with that, read them again. So, going back to the to the um the inspiration of of why this teaching got birthed and why i got picked again it was in response to a personal prayer where i just wanted to get to know god and it became how do i do that well i have to it, the answer is in this book <laughs> meditate on my words and, and, and I'm, I want to talk about this. With modern technology, I have not gone through them all, but in one week's time, and I work full time, in this packet alone is over a hundred pages of research on who God is. There's 81 Bible verses about knowing the nature of God. 42 Bible verses about holiness. 95 Bible verses about names and titles for Christ. 11 Bible verses about Christ, our righteousness. Not my holiness and righteousness because I don't see Christ on the cross. I see what he, my goodness, but his righteousness. Because my righteousness is as of dirty rags. That was prophesied in the book of Isaiah before Christ even came. That's an amazing book to read. I can't get out of Isaiah right now and the book of Psalms, but they're tied into what the themes have been going through here. 43 Bible verses about knowledge of Jesus Christ. 40 Bible verses about commandments of Christ, of Christ, the New Testament commandments. Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, tomorrow, who said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Heaven and earth will be rolled away, but my word is eternal. All the commandments are still, they're still for today. That, that, the, that, the, the, the doctrine of once saved, always saved, I'm good to go, I don't need to do anything. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. And, and, and again, we have to be verbs. Yes, you do have to do something. And there are commandments that Christ gave in the New Testament. It's full of them. Pastor Mike has a book on the parables. That's a good study. Read it. The parables teach you basically who the righteous is and the ungodly. God's two people groups he divided. 11 Bible verses about keeping Christ's commands. Again, 
be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. These are applicable for today. Are they a burden? Most people probably would say no, because they would say, well, wow, that's a loaded question, just like the Pharisees. When Christ, they asked Jesus a question, and he said, I'll answer that if you can answer this question. So they're going to answer it, many will, I believe, with what that person that asked the question wants, think, they think wants to hear, which takes them away from themselves. 45 Bible verses about righteousness. What would the result of this be if we did this? This is only, and, and again, I'm not drawing this to me. I'm just saying there's no excuse because you have this information that you have at your fingertips by modern technology to gather. You, you don't, and, and it's all the scriptures. It's what's in this book. It's a tool. And I really believe in my heart that I heard God say, I gave technology as part of the quickening that some of my people are asking me for. They are, I am quickening them. They have to be verbs. You got to put an effort into it. But he gave us the tool in which to do that. And he is our counselor. We can ask him. There's four other packets here of information. So there's 500 pages of research on who God is that you can, you, you can, you can grab. I can't go through all that. The purpose of all this is right now, as God is calling his church to holiness, I believe the body of Christ needs to focus right now more on Jesus and apprehending what God wants him to apprehend and allow the fivefold ministry to be able to continue what it's doing because it can only take people where it's at. And I know what my calling is. But I and I'm humbled. So you're not ever going to hear me give myself a title. But my purpose is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Why did you seek me? He's talking to his parents, his earthly parents. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? We all have to do that. I have to do that every week to be able to get up here and, and, and try to present a message uh, or at least to hear God's voice before I get up here. Otherwise, I'm just going to be, uh, if it's my words, it's not going to do anything. And I believe that's, that's a challenge for the church. Uh, eventually, we will get into Psalm 107, I think. <laughs> but that, I saw that psalm a week ago, and next week, if God allows, <laughs> I want to go through that line by line because there's this is an example in one one uh set of scriptures that clearly shows or at least it did to me precept must be upon precept line upon line little, here a little there a little it shows you that here but it also shows you uh praising god for his goodness for his righteousness so everything that we've been talking about holiness righteousness your identity in Christ and who Jesus is and and extolling Christ and God is is in is in this one book in the Bible
you can see everything we've been talking about right there. Now, I read that before, I think. I don't even remember, and I didn't see it. But that's an example of if you take the time to study God's words, how he can open up revelation. Because revelation, if it's man-made, is not revelation. Uh, I, 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 and I, I don't want to say what's going through my head right now, but uh, it's, it's kind of dung. It, it, it's not going to do anything. It's just a deception to pull you away from what God wants you to do. And that's to be able to walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ. And you're not going to get that revelation from another person. I can't give it to you. I can't take my hand and impart, unless God tells me to do so, what I studied this week and give it to you. You got to do it yourself. You got to be verbs, people. So I'm going to close on that, but um, we're going to. Well, I'm going to let God. I don't. I don't want to say that. I and I apologize because I've said on more than one occasion where we were headed and God took me in a different direction. <laughs> so I'm going to be quick to listen to God and slow to open my own mouth. So Father, we thank you for the inspiration that we can obtain and apprehend in your words, in your holy Bible, Lord, that they don't come from us, they don't come from man, neither male nor female, but they literally come from the washing of the word and the renewing in our mind and you changing our hearts. So, Father, we ask you to change us today. Let us leave not the same that we came in and let us go through the rest of our week as different people, as ambassadors and representatives of what you look like and not what the world looks like. We ask you to strengthen us in our inner man, Lord, that we can do that. We ask you for your forgiveness for where we failed. We repent for anything that we need to repent for. And we ask for your grace, Lord, the empowerment to be able to walk as your ambassadors and change those around us because it's the Spirit of Christ working through us and not ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen.